Finally, the simulation seems to be behaving accurately. The joint position commands are fixed at the moment, and I'm just poking the robot with the force. I'm really liking these results. I like how easy it is to set course direction. part one the robot was wild and uncontrollable this wasn't part of its programming I eventually figured out this was due to min max position limits of zero being imposed in the joints not sure why zeroed limits would cause instability but that was it after this and a few other parameter issues the simulation got realistic so here's a quick review of what I did I wired Arviz into my raw setup so I could inspect collision meshes and view the joint positions the controllers were publishing. You can actually inspect collision meshes in Gazebo 2. My first suspect was the collision boxes overlapping the hip joints. I added clearance but still keeping with very simplified geometry for performance. Unfortunately this didn't make a difference, so I began ripping out parts of the URDF to simplify, and eventually I discovered the joint limits issue. Setting the parameters to reasonable values fixed the joint craziness, but now I was left with this. At this point, I'm getting pretty frustrated over simulation results. I mean, here I have the simulation running with the robot off balance and gravity can't even pull the robot to the floor. So I look into some other physics engines within Gazebo. This interesting results. I do like how I can get a list of contact points from Gazebo, which will be useful in the robot dynamics algorithm. That's actually pretty realistic of a power fail. I then begin playing with friction and surface parameters of the robot linkages. This is getting better. I wired the joint state directly to the joint command, so the robot is doing a little dance, which is helping me see the results of the tuning. Friction parameters mu1, mu2, and damping factor are looking good. So is surface KP and KD factors. I really wish I knew what those meant. All I can find is KP should be really large and KD should be very small. As I tune the spring dampening here, you can see how the robot acts like an articulated spring toy. Some bobble in the joints. I need to turn up the stiffness and turn down the spring reference. And finally, with most of the parameters tuned, we arrive at a realistic simulation with accurate friction and joint stiffness. For the record, if you are tuning your own robot, here are the parameters I used. It was all trial and error. You can probably compute the mu and spring parameters, but from what I read, there doesn't seem to be a good way to compute the others. Let's review the state of the ROS2 control modules. Last time we still had one package using a feature branch. I'm happy to report we are now fully on main branch dependencies. We're making steady progress on our path to ML simulation. Gazebo is simulating reasonably well. We have a working Gazebo ROS2 plugin, joint PID and limits, joint position and trajectory, and Gazebo enabled URDF. So now on to wiring up the humanoid dynamics module, which includes the walking and balancing algorithms. This will include being able to give walking commands through Arviz, like I did on the real robot a few months ago. I should have some progress to show in a few weeks time, but until then, the human has been neutralized.